Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the SoftKey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 219. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, James Dunn has dug up Wingames backslash MS backslash Hearts. Isn't there a solitaire game called Hearts? Cause I got a funny feeling that's what this is gonna be. Um, text file and an executable. Brief description of Hearts. Hearts 1.1 for Windows is a four player card game in which the goal is to get as few points as possible. Okay, so it's not a solitaire game. Uh, at least it was on the right track in terms of cards. Um, cards of the heart suit are worth one point and the queen of spades are worth 13 points. I want to avoid th these 14 cards. The highest card of the lead suit takes four cards on the trick. Huh. So it almost sounds like... Yeah, I'm, I'm forgetting the, the name of the card game off the top of my head at the moment, but it sounds like a particular... You know, like one of those games where you're just trying to get rid of get rid of cards that you don't want or something. And I've probably played something like Hearts before, maybe even Hearts itself, but I don't recall the specifics. But in any case, um, this is actually a pretty big text file. <laughs> and apparently the author of this particular version of Hearts was a Paul Ped 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 Pedriana? Ped Pedirna? Pedri Pedri Hi. <laughs> I'm terrible at pronouncing things. Also, it looks like the registration fee was $10, so not a huge amount. In fact, that's pretty fair for Windows 3.1 software, if it works properly, which we're going to find out in a moment here. So, Hearts 12. Okay, so it took up the full screen, even though it's a bunch of draggable windows. Well, this one doesn't have a means to drag it. Hmm. So... Okay, I'm not sure. <laughs> now I can't do that window anymore. Uh, enter your name and quote. <laughs> Human, I will lose the computer? Heck no. I am me, and my quote is, I will eat this game. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> uh, what are my options here? Also, why is this still on the screen? Or I'm guessing maybe that's like an about window, because it said pitch. Okay, and then the pitch is like details for registration and everything. Yeah, apparently it was made in 1992 from the looks of that. And yeah, this doesn't need the full. Okay, I was about to say it looked like it, for a second it looked like it didn't have a resizable window, and didn't do the sizing right. But no, it fits in a window like that. It did not need the full screen. And it looks like there's different card backs here. So we got like a sort of twin moons going on there. We've got the Lightning Castle one, which is classic. We've got that. <laughs> what? It looks kind of familiar, actually, which I'm sad to say. But <laughs> no, I think this. I, if if memories, if unless my memory's failing me, I think this is like some kind of European children's show character or something like that. I might be wrong about that. Or this might be just based off of that or something. I don't know. It's uncomfortably familiar. Let's put it like that. And then another classic. Well, this one's actually, this one's more of like a classic backing to real playing cards, as opposed to digital ones. I know what, let's, let's go with, actually, let's go with the terrifying one. <laughs> so what other options do we have here? We can show scores, player comments, show instructions, prompt when all cards, point cards are out. Change rules? Oh, that's interesting. So, it's almost like house rules sort of thing here, like different little changes you can make to how the game has to be played. Okay, so new game. <laughs> We've got the computer players making quotes. So like, even though this is supposed to be a four player game, it doesn't actually look like four players can play it, which, you know, makes sense because you're on a computer screen and you don't want everybody to see each other's cards. But apparently my opponents are named Lace, Nitro, and Diamond. So, 
right now we're doing a pass left. Um, I forget which, I think it was the, um, yeah, I should probably quickly take a look at the, well, that's interesting. I thought this was going to pull up like a help screen, but it's actually its own special help system here. Okay, these are kind of weird rules, but whatever. So we start by passing three cards. And these are the ones I got back. So my play, I have to play a club if I have it. So, well, actually, I started with the two of clubs. And I came back around to the four of clubs there. I don't have a clubs, so we'll play that one. Two diamonds, five of diamond. Um, we'll go... Can I do this? Must follow suit when possible. Okay, so I guess I'll make an ace. Um, no one's got anything up, so I guess I'll make it a... Heart's not been broken yet. Weird. Okay, so... At least it's giving me very quick messages to let me know, like, what I'm doing wrong. So we'll do Jack. Okay, Heart's been broken now, so... And it's my turn, so get rid of that Jack. Get rid of that 5. And then we're right at the end here, and... Okay, so apparently I had got 10 points from that. Lee's got 3, Nitro got 13, because I think Nitro still had the Queen. So, I don't get it. How? Where did the points actually come from? Okay, this is the trick right here, because it says, After all four players have played, the player who played the highest card of the lead suit wins all four cards. Okay. Apparently the computer players are talking now. And Diamond's already playing the Hearts cards. Which means some, but I don't have like the really big Hearts cards. And because of how early it is, that gives me a good opportunity to get rid of one of the big ones there. Though apparently that wasn't... Oh, you know what? The other players probably still had the smaller cards and thus I got stuck with it. <laughs> I mean, I could turn the speed down, but I kind of like it going super fast. Um, well, it's my turn, and I do have a club, so I have to play a club, but I also have to keep in mind now that hearts has been broken into, which means anybody who doesn't have a club can play a heart, but at the same time, somebody's going to have that ace of clubs, but then if I play the king, they're not going to play, yeah, there's a lot of, there. okay, so there is actually a bit of complications to this, I guess I'll play the five, okay, and in this case, I'm going to play well, I know some somebody's going to have the three of hearts, but not necessarily anything higher than a... Not necessarily going to have anything higher than a six. But then I don't think these other players actually have a lot of hearts. I you know what, I'm going to play a five anyways. So now I have to play a diamond. Well, the ace is... Actually, is the ace bigger than... You know, it doesn't actually say anywhere in the rules whether the ace is a high or a low card, which doesn't help. Well, usually it's safe to assume it's a high card, so I'll go queen there. Three of spades. So someone might decide to play their queen of spades, so I'm going to put the two out. Uh, no one did. Um, we haven't seen a lot of clubs, so I'm going to see if maybe I'm not going to get hit by a heart. Nah, I got hit by a heart. Because I saw my score count go up slightly there. Um, now, once again, I don't have a cl I don't have a diamond, which means I don't have to play a diamond. I can play anything. So, if I, given what's going on right now, if I play the four of hearts, this person here, Nitro, is gonna is gonna take it and get a point from that. So, do I want to do that, or do I just want to get rid of a high card? So yeah, that was Hearts. Um, I'm pretty sure I've played a game like this before. Although I'm not entirely certain like when in my life, but it plays perfectly fine. Obviously it's limited to just one person on the screen actually playing it because it's kind of to be expected. But yeah, it actually plays perfectly fine. Though, oh. Well, this is bad. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't have held on to the queen because I didn't think the sp I didn't think I'd be hit with a with a spade that early. 
Ah, whatever. The point is, the game plays perfectly fine, save for, you know, terrifying card face. And would it be, would it have been worth $10? Uh, I guess if you want to be able to play Hearts, or this style of game without having to have other people around, yeah, plays fine. Next up, we have a three-way team dig between Zed Supremus, Happy Kitty, and Cleverly Blonde. Win games backslash arcade backslash cannon. With a name like that, I'm going to guess it's like some kind of artillery game or something. And we got a file id.diz, a very small executable, and a help file. So what's the id.diz say? Bang bang! And battlefield terrain will be randomly calculated, and the speed and direction of the wind will be randomly selected. The player who gets the first shot will also be randomly selected, as will be indicated by the next shot indicator. Yeah, this sounds like an artillery game. What's the help file say? So yeah, just reading through the help file here, everything seems pretty, pretty typical. Uh, one thing that's a little weird, you can actually save a game in progress. Um, <laughs> and the, the reasoning is in case there's like a layout of the randomly generated terrain that you like, so that you can actually use it again and again. Although I'm not seeing any, um, not seeing any information on if this is, um, shareware or not. Might not be, it might be freeware. Although that's an interesting, <laughs> that's an interesting way of making it look. They actually do look like cannons, like little icon graphic cannons. We got the flagpoles. Wind speed is 43 kilometers an hour. I have no context for that. Um, what's the help about say? Can fire game for Microsoft Windows 3.0 by David B. Lutton II. Like, apparently copyright 1990. That just makes it even more interesting that a Windows 3.0 game is actually looking perfectly fine here. And yeah, it's actually shareware. <laughs> it says $10 for it. And we can actually configure the options here. There is a one-player mode, so we'll do that. And I guess new game. Okay, so this is a definitely a different layout from before. Um, how do I actually affect... Um, Anything? Oh, there's an aim thing. Okay, so angle. Um, well, if I'm green and I'm firing on red, I'm gonna need a little bit of a higher angle here. Um, velocity. You know, it says wind speed is 21 kilometers an hour. It doesn't say what direction, though. Although, you know what? The flags. The flags are pointing to the right, so I'm guessing maybe it's rightward. So I'm going to try 100 velocity. Okay, that wasn't good enough. Oh. One player mode simply makes it so that the red player is just a target to shoot at. So yeah, you can't actually lose in one player mode. <laughs> Well, we're already here. Let's see if we can actually hit this thing. 160? Whoa, that was way out of... way out of the line. Oh, 120 almost hit. Although it created a bump in the ground as opposed to a divot, as the game's referring to them as. So, that's kind of weird. And there we go. And thus, the battle ends. The green team is victorious. To the victor go the spoils. Um, what spoils? <laughs> you seriously don't win anything here. There isn't even a score counter. <laughs> okay, I randomized a few landscapes, and here's an interesting one. And yeah, the flags are actually pointing the other direction now. So to figure out what direction the wind is going, you just look at the flags. So the wind speed is 37 kilometers an hour to the west. And it's green turn, green team's turn. And I actually turned it back to the standard two-player mode. So with this kind of going on here, we're going to want a 45 degree angle, pure 45 degrees, and we're going to say velocity 140. Ooh, needs a lot more velocity than that. Red team, on the other hand, going to go also a 45 degree angle. It's already at 180, might as well do it that way. Fire. That was too much. Quickly checking here to see if there's any variance in the accuracy. 
I don't think there is. I think it's just a little more sensitive than I realized. But in any case, red team's gonna go 135 power. Almost. Then green team's going to go 215 power. They're getting real close to each other now. Green down to 212. Uh, still not hitting. Red up to 139. There it goes. And thus the battle ends. The red team is victorious. To the victor goes the nothing. So that was Bang Bang. Um, obviously an incredibly basic artillery game that doesn't even have uh, an AI opponent. Like for $10, it doesn't really do a lot, but then you also have to consider when this came out because this was dated 1990, specifically October 1990. So this would be old. This would be for Windows 3.0. Like for a Windows 3.0 game in 1990, for ten dollars, yeah, it's probably not that bad. But at the same time, also consider that Scorched Earth was just around the corner, and Tank Wars, not the not the early one, but the one that I covered on ADG, would have also been out around this point in time. I think Tank Wars might have been ninety-two. Like I don't remember off the top of my head, but the point is, is that this is not remarkable as far as an artillery game is concerned, but for a Windows 3.0 title, it actually isn't half bad. And our last take for today from Sane of Streets is win games backslash puzzle backslash Towns 11. Not exactly sure what this is gonna be. Um, Towns 11 probably means Towns 1.1. Um, looks like it was made with Borland stuff. We've got a register form. Uh, another town's help write file ID that is and read me. So a lot of stuff to look at, but we'll take a look at the ID that is first. Tournament of the Towns 1.1. Yet another puzzle designed to reduce productivity in Microsoft Windows 3.1. In this case, you are presented with the task of removing all the marbles from the six blue squares in the lower left corner of the playing field. This program implements a puzzle presented by Scott Morris in the games column of the April 1993 issue of Omni Magazine. Huh. So basically this is a digital adaptation of some kind of physical puzzle from the sounds of it. Okay, this is kind of unusual. So apparently this particular, this particular version of this puzzle has been put together by a Stephen Marshall of Homespun Software. Now he's calling it freeware, except he wants people to register it. And this is where it's weird because there's actually no registration fee. So yeah, he basically, he just wants people to register it so that he knows people are using it, <laughs> which that's not common to see. It is a little weird, but I get what he's going for. But then also there's this. Apparently, Scott Morris, who I believe was the person who came up with this puzzle, was offering a $5,000 purse to the first person who sends him the correct solution with the fewest finite number of moves, and that no solution had been found to date. So, I guess that probably means we're probably not going to find a solution right now, but hey, you never know. <laughs> I'm going to guess that someone probably has solved this by this point, maybe, but we'll see. Actually, yeah, but between now and editing the video together, I'm going to take a quick check and pop up a little thing in a moment to say whether this puzzle has been solved or not. Of course, the trick now is that you people will know that, and I won't, because I'm not checking until I'm done recording everything. <laughs> so, anyways, Towns version 1.1, Homespun Software, and apparently... Oh, wow. Takes place in a very tiny window. So, like, how do you actually play it? Oh, wait, if the, how, could, how could there be a $5,000 purse for it if there's an auto-solver? Although I'm guessing the auto-solver probably doesn't, isn't, like, efficient. But, yeah, how am I actually supposed... 
supposed to play this. Okay, so the puzzle is solved when all the blue hotspots are unoccupied. When a marker is removed, a marker is placed in a spot above the vacated spot, and another is placed in a spot to the right. Okay. Only one marker can occupy any one spot, so whenever either of the two adjacent spots are occupied, that marker cannot be removed. For example, here are the cases that block the lower left marker. Interesting. So if there's a, already a, already um, green markers in either of those spaces, I cannot put one where the red marker is. Markers that can be removed from the board are colored green. Markers that cannot are colored red. So if I would go like that, and then that, but now I can't put one there. See, so yeah, and apparently whatever I managed to do here, I've probably made it impossible to solve the puzzle <laughs> because it's just sort of it's sort of expanding outwards there and I still needed to remove that one. So I'll try this again. This time we'll try just putting that one forward a bit. I'll send that one back. And Send a couple of this stuff, but well, no, that just puts me into a similar position as before. Okay, what if, what if we move some stuff up diagonally here and then push that up diagonally again, go up the middle, and then that doesn't work for us at all. But, you know, at least this time I managed to um, make a little hole there. <laughs> Oh, hang on. I was like right clicking and stuff was. Okay, you can actually back up your moves by right clicking. That's kind of nice. Although it's done in a weird way. If you right click anywhere on here, it like gives you the menu, unless it's a spot you just clicked on. You can see the little outline around it. If you right click inside that outline, it backs up your moves. Interesting. Okay, so in this case, I managed to find a way to get rid of that middle one, except it made it impossible to make any progress here. And if I do that, that doesn't work. So I guess we should probably just try to see if the auto solver actually can do it. So go. So I don't think the auto solver can because <laughs> that doesn't look like it's making any progress. Actually, what's this truche tiling? Oh, it just makes the tiles look different. I don't like it. Yeah, I'm not entirely convinced this puzzle's possible. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is that sometimes, sometimes people try to come up with these puzzles offering like these these rewards for things, but this doesn't look like it's possible. Just based on the way that it propagates outwards. Well, in any case, that was Tournament of the Town. It's one of those impossible puzzles that someone may or may not, may or may not have ever solved. But yeah, this one doesn't appear to be solvable. Although let's see what happens if the auto solver tries to do it after I've had something, had a go. No. So yeah, I think just to save everybody's sanity, I'm going to stop now.